recording. Okay, folks, we're recording. Uh, this is the Price Script Community Call on the 28th of May. Um, and uh, I am going to be driving it. I'm Nicholas, and uh, I'm going to uh, just go down the agenda items. Um, we have uh, an introduction section, so if it's your first time here, just uh, take yourself off mute and introduce yourself. I, I think we have one person here for whom this is their first time, but I can't see. Oh, I frightened them off. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. OK, so uh, that's that item covered. Um, so there are no announcements uh, on the agenda uh, yet. So um, we have agenda items, uh, which, the first one of which is one that I put, which is a post PyCon PyScript Pensees, which is, you know, post PyCon thinking thoughts, uh, you know, and it's just an opportunity for those of us who are at PyCon just to perhaps say very quickly their impressions of PyCon and PyScript at PyCon, uh, anything we need to know just so the wider community get get to know so i'm going to be really bossy and i'm really sorry about this but fabio i just see you finished your yogurt so uh I did not, but okay sorry about so, that but go on T tell us what, about, what was what was what was your impression of python um so python as usual a like great great conference great chance to meet different friends and stuff but for PyScript land i think it was actually really, really, really good, in my opinion. Um, the Wasm Summit, yeah. I think, was good enough um, in the sense that we got we got the interested folks in the community talking about some. It was a starting point for some important conversations, um, you know, from the um, aligning APIs to um, looking at packaging and and other things like this um so that with from that followed up uh, a few really interesting uh topics one of them is i had a multiple chats with yanis and Chang from the conda ipi slash um uh, conda commute conda forge community really good chats with pradum uh yanis and others from the PyPA uh, C core devs, this perspective. Also, Eric Snow, um, even though not so much on this um, specific topic. Um, I know there was, uh, well, so we talk, and, and then with Russell, yourself, etc., talking about the packaging problem in, in the Python and Wasm ecosystem, but also possibly looking at generating artifacts. Uh, or the, the environment um, frozen before. So that's related to the discussion that uh, on, on GitHub, um, Andrea. So just for context, because I saw your comment and I was like, yeah, probably Andrea saw this VR out of context and, and is, is wondering. But, I, but as uh, Hood said, there's been quite interest in that part. Um, other than this, I think, um, small things but need to happen um things like um we talked about the tier three uh, support for mscripten and and some a couple of core devs may be helping hood get the right status to maintain that side so just just a few things that were kind of needed to be discussed um pa -pa -pa. and i forgot I, oh also Super excited, super happy with how open spaces turned out. Talks, the, the talks were really, really cool. Uh, invite everyone to go watch them um, because they were really three great quality talks. Um, a lot of good insights about how people are seeing that I, I are basically applying PyScript uh, for their, to solve their problems, um, but also good to see the reaction from the community uh, and where we are today. Um, a lot of people are super impressed about, you know, level of maturity and, and how the, the, the project is progressing. So, um, and and really good to see sprints, people submitting PRs and everything else. So, yeah, very, very happy. Sorry, it took me forever. But, no, don't worry. Yeah. Um, uh, Martin, your impressions? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. 
but basically everything that Fabio said, it was really, it was good to see, you know, three talks on PyScript, none of which that we gave. That was really good. Lukash's talk was amazing. A lot of interest on the, on the booth. I would say that it felt like the vast majority of the of the questions and people were coming up were interested in PyScript. Yeah. Um, some of that may have been because we had the best swag um, in the uh, in the conference with the PyScript bunny hoodies. But no matter what, whether they were just feigning interest to get a really cool hoodie, that's fine too. <laughs> but no, there was a there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of interest, so it was really good to it was really good to see. Yeah. Cool. Um... I'd just add, uh, yeah, basically what they've just said. As I'm walking around the corridor track, especially during the sprints, um, lots of, um, you know, PyScript, again, was had a lot of buzz at PyCon. You know, people uh, had heard of it. They already, they, they already knew about MicroPython as well, and they'd kind of got the message that it was fast and things had been updated and stuff. So the kind of the vibe was very, was very, very good. I'd, I'd like to say... Yeah, you know, you're right to point out that the talks were by three people who aren't us, um, as it were. Um, I think our aim, I'm being teacherish and giving ourselves homework here, our aim for next year is that we have created a space where people have made projects, mature projects on top of PyScript, and they are giving talks about their projects. And it just so happens that PyScript is the thing that they chose. So that PyScript is now a kind of a mature, not boring, but, you know, it's not a it's not a um, dangerous thing to use because people are starting to do cool things with it. I spoke to um, several people about PyScript related things that could um, fulfill that sort of thing. So Simon Willison uh, talking to him about uh, SQLite support in MicroPython. Um, I was talking to Damien about this this morning. Um, it should be relatively easy to compile that in. Um, so I'm going to send Simon some links to how you go and do that because it's documented somewhere so he can have a play uh, with that. Uh, there's also a project called Tahoe LFS, which is a distributed um, peer-to-peer file system, uh, which was written in Python 2.7 using Twisted and 20,000 lines of code. That was That was just their client. Um, and they've, uh, and the reason it was so big is because they, they hand baked their own protocol down the wire using twisted. Um, but they've recently, uh, migrated to using HTTP as their transport, um, and wondered whether they could create a browser based client using PyScript. And I said, cause they said, will twisted work with MicroPython and I said well for a start it's Python 2.7 and it's twisted so I can pretty much say no but you're probably uh, going to be better creating your app from scratch so uh, let's see I need to reconnect with those folks and see how they're getting on with that and help them out if need be and hopefully invite them to discord and and what have you so um so that was my impression um so lots of really good stuff by the sounds of it. Um, so I don't want to keep people because I know Fabio, you have other meetings and things like that. So um, if there aren't any more PyScript related things at PyCon, uh, the next item is uh, Martin. Questions from a worker newbie. All right. <clears throat> so let me share my screen. So, can you see my screen? Yep, we can see your screen. Lovely. And you should see uh, PyScript.com and an app called Workers. That's right. Lovely. All right. So, first of all, my question I had. Um, so, what this was, was me thinking, let me experiment with doing what we consider or, or slowly becoming a fairly uh, nice pattern in the PyScript land such that I have a main thread that's running MicroPython to do my UI stuff and then a worker thread using Pyodide, um, which can do all my heavy lifting stuff. So I basically was just thought, well, I'll find out how to do that. So I went through the docs. I did struggle a little bit with the docs, I will say, because it felt like a lot of it was related to calling back the other way and doing... Um, 
like doing dog manipulations from the worker thread. Whereas it, it feels to me that like the baby, not the baby step, but it feels to me that one very powerful pattern that we have is that I just got a worker thread that I want to put something that takes a long time in. And then I want to call it from the main thread so I can call it asynchronously. So I don't, I, it can go off and do its stuff. So that's what I was just attempting to do here was as a newbie was just to find out how I do that. Um, so I ended up with, um, with my worker, which has um, just a function that takes a long time. So it sleeps, it sleeps, it wakes and returns 42 and then puts itself on the sync pump. And then I've got a main function. Um, so this is in my main thread and this is where I, I wait for. I, and so I have some questions really. Is this actually the right way to do things? And then I have some thoughts about um, like naming and things like that. Maybe we do it. I can answer that. Yes, I, that, that was that was what I thought might happen. Can <laughs> <laughs> I stop sharing your screen just for a second, Martin, or or go back to yeah, the yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the 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 quick answer is no. You're doing it wrong. Um, okay. That's because the DOM is a live thing that can change. You can have more Pi thing or script type Pi thing there happen, happening over time. Um, but we have a Pi worker. So the, the ideal scenario, which I think is documented, and if it's not, we should document it, is you have your MicroPython thing doing whatever it wants, and you bootstrap in there a Pyodide worker. Don't uh, just... Okay, okay so, right. I, I, yeah. I, so, yeah. so, so I, that's exactly what I said to Martin when he showed me that. Uh, and Martin's reaction was, ah, yeah, but I want to have two script tags on my page because that feels like the most natural thing to do as a... And again, this is like the new, I, I um, emphasize the newbie side of this. Um, yes, the, uh, yeah, and exactly. Let me let me move you over here so I can see. Uh, when you have the DOM, the DOM bootstraps in different times, especially yeah. when it comes to MicroPython, Pyodide. Um, you never know. So the thing is, a script type Py works by itself. There's no logic to make it not work by itself. So whenever you type a script type pi, that's a pyodide thing running by itself because it's allowed on the DOM by default. That's our decision to how we present. So it's like if I have, um, back to classic pi script, if I have um, a script tag and an mpy script tag, uh, how do they interfere with each other? They don't. As is just that they live on the main and they they do their own thing on the main accordingly. So when you want to bootstrap a worker from a MicroPython thing, you probably might think about an API to simplify this as much as possible on PyScript side. But at the end of the day, you're gonna run the worker from your MicroPython thing because otherwise, the the scripts on the on the page live in a different time, in a different bootstrap time, and in a different everything. And so I think the, the uh, expectations here are... Okay, okay, so what you're saying is... What, what, what... Wrong, but there's a stretch to it because you, you're just injecting different... So it was our decision to make both MicroPython and PyScript available on the DOM at the same time, for whatever reason, I don't know, so maybe for legacy reasons, but at the same time, every script type something is a thing apart. So when you have, okay, multiple MPy thing with an M thing, it's, it, it's one thing. But if you have two different scripts, you, you have to think about these those two different script type on the DOM are completely separated words. And and so we should simplify 
that thing in our PyScript API, that's for sure, we can do that. But at the same time, I don't know how to solve these in particular, because we, we want the script type Py to run independently. And so we don't want to, the script type Py to be dependent of, so, so all I'm saying is that either we add an extra um, attribute on the script type Py related to an ID that is on the script type Py, but that becomes more cumbersome than just bootstrapping a Py worker from, from MicroPython, I think. Right, so, so, so that's okay. why Py code and then when you expose the sync uh, in, in either words, and you expect those sync things to work. Otherwise, it's a mess in terms of interoperability. Okay, I'm right. just uh, uh, just before we get, and Fabio's had his hand up for the last five minutes. So I just want to make sure that he gets his, um, you know, his, his show of the floor. So Fabio. No, I think Martin was before me. Um, no, I, so I, he's just, trying to chime in. Yeah. So it was just. Um, yeah, so like I said, this was me approaching it from, I wonder how I do this. And part of me was, oh, do you know what? I know I've got I've got my main thread, which is going to be doing the GUI. I've got some worker code. And I was like, oh, well, maybe I can just do it like this, right? And I just say, there's my main, there's my worker. And now my main can start calling my worker, which I made work, right? But I realized that I had to wait for, I had to wait for, I had to wait for Fred, who is my worker Fred, um see what i did Great there pun. Work of, um it was but if, if you're but asking if, for, if you're asking oh. for a main thread to oh. not now but um, okay um, Fabio, Fabio, yeah, Fabio. can i chime in real quick yeah 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 yes honestly i think we need to be very careful about saying what's right and what's wrong because it will oftentimes it will depend on what you're really trying to do Right. And uh, and for some use cases, things just work for other use cases. There are more optimal use, uh, ways you can do stuff. And depending on whatever, like if you have like, like, for instance, uh, great to have accessibility to the DOM on workers. Amazing. If you abuse it, it's slow yeah. because of message passing and everything else. Right. So at that point, you you we would probably need to recommend users saying well your use case is too heavy for what you want to do you should move your operations to the main thread your dom operations to the main thread and just have the minimal way of communicating between workers and um um and, and main thread to 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 avoid round trip and stuff like that right like so i think and if for martin more than what's the right way like martin is a very senior and, and very talented developer if from the documentation you it was you feel like you didn't have enough information for you to decide or to operate then i think we yeah i think we probably need to document major use cases trade backs trade-offs you know uh things like that um just my two cents yeah yeah it's like i said i for me, I was just I, I was purposefully looking at it as a beginner, right? Which was, a, it, it feels to me that a, a really, um, a, a really kind of common use case will will be this idea that I've got some long running code, I want it to be working on a worker, right? So because I I want it to be working the work. So the way that I think, the way that I was thinking of building this application, I'm not interested in this application, or really probably ever in well never say never right i'm not really interested in dom manipulation from from the worker thread right because if i'm, I'm building anything for real it's going to be too slow yeah. and 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 but for me i i do i do feel it's a really powerful thing that we're making easier for people which is hey you've got this idea of workers you've got your worker threads you can just instantiate environments in them you can call functions on them and so that to me it seems to me like a really powerful thing so it was this was really just me coming at it as a beginner going well how does that look and how does that feel in you know in what we've exposed as of now andrea so lack of documentation is what what's missing here because you cannot cannot mix up what we offer on the on the live dom on the main thread and what we offer behind the scene where we pi worker so pi worker is documented somehow but it's true that we are not explaining 
or we're not providing a um, fully working example of what it can do and how it can do it. But the so, thing is, the moment you want to expose functions back and forward, you can't use two different uh, interpreters. So the moment you do that, you, you have to have conf you have to confine the logic within one interpreter because otherwise the, that interpreter cannot intercept the other interpreter word. Uh, we have all the orchestration to make MicroPython strap a Pyodide worker, but that's not the way you do it. So if, if this is uh, how I do it, you're right. We don't have, we don't cover these in the documentation. Okay, so sure, we sure. So what is the recommended, so if I wanted to do this, my recommended ways, I would just have my main.py yeah. and then I would import py, py worker. worker. Is that yeah, what? exactly. And then I would say my worker equals, equals py, py worker. worker. Type equals oh. my, type equals py died. Type equals pi, just. Your, your file name, your file name, whatever that is. First, my worker, first the file name, the, the URL you want to, you wanna you wanna run as a as a worker, which which was in the in the HTML. I don't know what you're doing. I, I can't read it right now. No, Maybe it's all pixel. Sorry. It's pixelated. Oh, oh, that's because I haven't paid for the upgrade of. Um... <laughs> <laughs> They're just randomly so, putting gray splodges in. Now it looks good. So worker pi type pi, and then. From there, you have worker.sync, you expose what you want from from, from the pi iodide worker to consume, or you worker.sync.consume, whatever the type pi. Uh, so um, when, when, is, when is this object ready for work? That's solved on the JavaScript side. On the Python side, actually, you shouldn't wor worry about it. So I should just be able to say here, um, result equals await worker.sync take a long time. Uh, maybe not. Because you want that result. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you want that thing to Yeah, take a long time is not registered. So you want that thing to be ready. So it, this is solved on the, okay, background first. Um, the Pi Worker is in discussion right now because I already said it's not one-to-one -to, -one to what we offer in the, in the JavaScript world, but at the same time, we require, if we want to offer the same in the JavaScript world or Python world, we will require a mandatory async thing. The most common use case that you await worker sync, whatever, within an event, within a, something that gives the worker a chance to register itself and register whatever it is, because pi worker is inevitably async. So it has to bootstrap iodide, and iodide takes one second more to be to be to be available. So you can't do that. Uh, if you add a non-click event to anything, and that you uh, and it's an asynchronous thing, and then you can await worker sync take a long time, and you can do that once that thing has been bootstrapped. I this see. Right. Right. It's right. one of the reasons. Uh, so on the JavaScript side, this is fully solved because people are using from JavaScript, they are bootstrapping workers from either MicroPython, but mostly PyODide already. Um, and, and, and it was uh, an actual need for people using this. And all I've said, and there is a discussion actually in, uh, in PyScript uh, repository about this, because the PyWorker story is um, on, the, on the Python side, is half baked right now, and you just showed one of the reasons this is not done yet. And uh, right, but the, but the way, but the way that I did it originally, if I can go back to this. So the way that this, so this all, this if you, all, you were doing, 
that would have worked. Yes, so yeah, this, the while yeah, this, is uh, yeah. Everything but, else makes no sense to me, so it's it's pointless to me to show that. Because because you're adding an event listener to something that actually is not listening to that event. So it's uh, it, so that, it's so that that will work. I do get this interesting thing, yeah, which says it's not, it's not working the way you think it, it is. Oh, that's okay. All I do. But I am getting I, I am getting not, this I done event on Fred. Yeah, because it bubbles up. So it starts from there, and the uh, Pyodite takes a while to bootstrap. So whenever it bootstraps, it fires the event on that target, and then it bubbles up, up to the window. So it's a coincidence that you are seeing that. But that that's oh, well, well, no, because I, I'm, I'm you can't I'm, you can't. You can't I'm add think, think things there, and you cannot receive same things back. I don't care about listeners. Listeners lives on the DOM, which is live already, but you cannot synchronize the fret sync take a long time, and result is 42, and, and I, I have no idea how is that working, because you're just, oh, okay, I know, I know how, how, why this is working is because you are, uh, interfering with a different word, but that's not MicroPython dealing with Pyodite. So this demo is actually misleading because you are dealing in both scripts in in different words somehow. So I don't I don't know I don't know how this is working. Oh, okay, Fred. Okay, you are taking the worker. Okay, now I understand. Sorry, it's very blurry from for from my screen. Uh, now I can read it, and uh, yes, that, okay, what you're doing, <laughs> okay, this is interesting, what you're doing is a feature of the script exposing, exposing the, the cross worker, and so you can interact with it, yes, but the question you asked before, so I can just pie bootstrap something, some, some worker, and then just a wait thing and it's gonna happen. That's not gonna work. So in this case, you are explicitly using, as you can, so in this case, what you're doing, you're indirectly doing what the uh, PyWorker or MPyWorker does on the JavaScript world. You don't even need to, to do any of these dance. You, you are side affecting this dance to do what you want. But that's not the way you should do it. But this is but, but, but this is where, because where a pilot worker. So that, that what I'm saying is that this works as a as a requirement for, for the platform. So we're exposing the X worker, cross worker in, in the polyscript to make it possible because people ask for it in polyscript. And this is working right now. But at the same time, this is not what we want to offer in terms of MicroPython bootstrapping a Pyodide worker in PyScript. So this is, you're using right now uh, a PolyScript feature, not a PyScript one. Right. But this, but this is because Martin was using two script tags, one of which was to create that code running on the worker. So he needs to get a reference to it from, they are, they from, from somewhere. But if he does it in the in the um, way that we suggest, which is to use the Pi worker in the MicroPython script, then, you know, this is all handled this for is, him already. This is working, but this is not how it should be done. That's, yeah. that's what I'm trying yeah, to yeah, 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 So yeah. This, it's somehow working, but this is not what we want people to use MicroPython on the main thread to bootstrap a pilot worker. It should be more seamless and it should be confined into Python code. So you just have your main Py, main.py with your script Tomo and you just bootstrap Pyodite in there and everything works out of the blue. And that what happens in JavaScript already. In this case, um, but either either way, right? So here's the here's the thing. I don't, I, I, I understand no, here, it. Here, here you're exploiting a, a polyscript thing 
that is supposed not to be and, the most UX uh, right, friendly was, thing, <laughs> but it, it, it helps. So in, in this case, you're doing something that works because PolyScript offers you that. But because we are in a PyScript community call, I, I was telling, I was trying to tell, this is not how PyScript works. And you <laughs> should not probably do this because this is how PolyScript works. But that's not what we guarantee in terms of PyScript functionality. Because that makes sense. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. But to me, it's like either way, because so here's the way I think about it, right? So me as an application writer, I'm thinking, I've got my main thread, I've got a worker thread, I've got some Python. And so the reason I went this way was just because I was like, oh, I've got here's some stuff, here's the code I want you to put on the main thread with MicroPython, here's some code I want you to put on the worker, th worker thread with PyDide. And now, now what I know I need to do somewhere inside my main thread, even if I put it on a button click, right? I'm still going to have to check somehow, some way, I need to know that my worker thread is up and running. Right. And, and so it's just like and, and, and so the way that obviously I made it work. So even if this was on a button click, I still couldn't just call a wait thread sync get a long time unless I just made sure I waited long enough before I clicked the button. Right. But I would still in my code at some point need to be able to say, OK, is my worker. So I, I'm thinking I've got my main thread. I've got my workers. When they're ready, I can start calling them. So this is how I ended up with the narrowing it down. So when this specific, when Fred itself is ready, then I know that I can I can start to call it right. Um, but th th and that was the only reason that the, the way I did it there. So even if I did it with a with a Pi worker, then so what 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 you're saying is that if you click before. Iodide is ready. Nothing happens, right? Well, you, my yeah, point is, you call, my point you call something that you think will be there. Fred dot sync dot take a long time isn't even there yet because Pyodide hasn't even finished. Uh, my, my point, yeah, my point that's, is that's, that, that's inevitable. So Pyodide cannot bootstrap in zero time. So no, exactly, uh, exactly. So my point, my point is, no matter how I do this. I've got I've got code that I want on a main thread. I've got some code that I want in a worker, so I know that I can just it can do the long running stuff, and I don't have to care about it, right? But but now because to me it feels like a really cool feature because I can I can write stuff that's synchronous in my worker thread, and I don't care because when I call it, I can call it asynchronously because I'm going across the message passing system, right? So now I can have my worker thread chugging away, doing whatever it needs to do, synchronous, nice easy code to write. My main thread can do this. I also understand that part of my job, no matter how I write it, is I I've got to wait until the till till my worker is ready. I know that there's going to be some time. I know that that's not you know it can't start up instantaneously. So my point is, what is the pattern that we show to people to say this is how you do it? This is how you wait for your worker thread to be ready. Because I imagine like I imagine that this particular case where I've just got one main and one worker is probably going to be a fairly common thing, right? I could put a bunch of functions in here that do synchronous code and take a long time, and then my yes. main.py can do all my GUI stuff, and then I'm and then I'm happy, right? So the thing hey. is, two caveats. Um, first, first one, you need an async attribute in your MicroPython code on the main. That's that's the first caveat. You covered that already. Second yeah. one. Would you be happy to have an await by worker? Because that's what happens in the JavaScript world. So in JavaScript, you await a by worker and it's ready only when it's ready. <laughs> and not not oh, right. never. So that's what we do on JavaScript side. And that's that's why I say this is an ongoing discussion because the JavaScript module when it comes to workers is completely different. And uh, would you be happy yeah, I mean, with that? Oh, and you that could have you a, have I mean, you're instantiating a class here with PyWorker, and you can't yeah. you can't await okay. instantiation of a class. But what you could have is worker have equals PyWorker, and then you could right. await worker dot ready. Oh, because that that requires you to write a definition of already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From... But but if you if you go, if exactly. you add a new line and put await worker dot ready. Right there we go. So ready will resolve when 
the workers ready that, that's the basket model is is doing that already yeah yeah so yeah exactly that, so if we if we expose why, right. that, if we expose that in python then martin's problem is is fixed his and his, then, his his understanding that i know my worker is ready for me to be able to now interact with it yeah it happens on yeah. js already so it, it, maybe it, maybe what if i don't want to await it what if i i guess it's a promise right so i can yeah. give you a i can give you a dot then right <laughs> or however how, how how do we expose it yeah, if, you, if you add a dot then it means that my worker returns a promise and not an instance so yeah. i don't want to mess up with your expectations I thought but, expectations, so but how so what what would i do here then in python if i wanted to not await it but i just want to to kick it off because if i put if i put an await if i put an await if i put an await worker dot ready here right and then yeah and then and then here i've got you know carry on doing ui stuff I don't want to do yeah. that, right? So I, I, I want to carry on doing this. Oh. So what, what syntactically would I do to just set myself a flag so that I can just check, basically? So or, you, or... you set up UI stuff before waiting for ready, and then when it's ready, it's ready. But you, there, there's no workaround about Pyodide being slow at Bootstrap. So it, it's going to take one second. You're going to wait for that second, no matter where or how. It's gonna take one second. So. Oh yeah, 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 I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm I'm totally happy with that, right? I'm just I'm just yeah. trying to work out how I how I hook up, like either on a callback so I could set a flag. So I I, I get I see what you're saying. So, like, so I I would you would you would do all that there and then so, have so something. On, on, yeah, line nine, take away the await and do worker dot ready dot then. Right. That's that's what I'm saying. That's what I was gonna say. I just and then dot then in. Because it's a it promise that same. ready returns. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The same. So if yeah, you are waiting for the ready, and then you invoke that promise, that that callback, whatever you pass to then, uh, is the same. So we say this this doesn't exist yet, right? Is that what we're saying? This yes, this that ready exists. doesn't exist. It, it, it exists in the exist. JavaScript world. We've just not, um, as I understand it, Andrea, uh, we've just not we haven't got a dot ready method on an instance of the pi worker class well, we don't have anything like the javascript module yeah. yeah but there was a discussion about this and i talked about it and uh, it's still there up it's open and we can keep discussing in there because that that this all these i'm seeing is exactly why the discussion was open yeah yeah the pi worker story in python code is completely different from the pie worker story in uh, which is also m pie workers story to to avoid the type pi type m pi so all these details that nobody needs um uh it's solved hey. in the jm world uh, is different in the in the python world because um we don't we never had so many use cases and right now <clears throat> the moment people start asking about JavaScript fixing this is the moment I fix that. I don't necessarily like the way I fixed it. But it works seamlessly for exactly these specific use cases. So this this is solved to me. It's just what do you want? Are you happy? Because on the JavaScript world, it's await PyWorker. And PyWorker maybe is a def, it's not a class, and returns a class where you can do stuff. So, or you return something else where you can do stuff. Okay. So, in Java world, that's fine. In Python world, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm asking you, what would be your best suggestion to await a worker, a Py worker, or an NPy worker in general? Because, yeah, that that that's that's needed. It, it's clear that that's needed. And yeah. this this demo. Okay. Occurs. So, so okay. can can you? share with us uh, a link to that discussion just so that it's kind of in the records as it were I, i'm also very aware of the time and that it's sorry, yes we, we've yes, got sorry, sorry. 10, 10 minutes left and uh, andrea has um uh, a, a micropython terminal on main um item as well which she wants to present but this is these sorts of discussions are fascinating uh, they really are and as andrea says 
you know, it's still up in the air. And, and Martin, you poking this with a stick is exactly what we want um, as well. Um, so and I know this is, this is an unofficial part of it because it's not, I didn't put it on the demo sheet, but this is showing you Electron running PyScript running event on as a desktop app. There you go. <laughs> So I can open and save files from the local file system oh, because it. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Got that for nothing. That awesome. one's for free. Perfect. Now how do I? Now stop, how do I stop, stop showing my screen with showing, this thing? Yeah, yeah. Stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one. Right. There we okay. Go. Right then. Oh man, that was a that was a mega conversation. Uh, Andrea, for the sake of time, matey, the the floor is yours. Show us show us MicroPython terminal things um okay we've got uh, about 10 minutes left can you see my screen it's, oh, yes we can this. we can this thing. Uh, anyway um no that's not what i want to show so this is micro in a micro terminal of worker um what I'm doing, MPyScript script terminal, print hello microbat terminal for me. Uh, okay, let, let me change this. So if I do the spy, uh, you're gonna notice a different thing. So <clears throat> my terminal is read only on main thread. And yeah. I can't, sorry, not, not that one, uh, this one. And this is pilot actually because I yeah I didn't change the the the, the message and the, the the thing is not blinking so the, the thing is just blocked I can't type and blah 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 and this is instead what I'm proposing MicroPython has like MicroPython on terminal uh, on worker has a uh, full terminal capability. Not now, because what are we missing here? Import. Import, import code. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Word, interact. Yeah, we really need to publish some Visual Studio <laughs> thing to deal with the Pi and MPy thing. Okay, so now we have MicroPython Terminal Main, MicroPython Terminal Worker, and um, What's the difference? So our main is like A equal input um, what? Um, ah. ah, you're you're blocking it with an alert. What is main? It's main. Yeah, it's inevitable. I mean, on the main thread, you cannot block really yeah, yeah, exactly. unless, and that's the way we do it. Yeah. And here we have like A equal input uh, input E. <laughs> Um, what uh, worker here? A is worker, so we have main thread, worker thread. You already saw the, the, the difference. So, you, you fill in a terminal in a worker, you inevitably need the uh, the, the thing here, yeah. Um, when, when you're on main, um, what else? So, if I do for in range um, zero three. Uh, actually, I should have done that before. Import time, uh, print i, and um, time slip one. I get out, and we have to wait three seconds before we can see a result <laughs> on a worker. Uh, this is for i in range. Um, zero three input time print uh, I and uh, time slip one. So on a worker, you see the stream is going right. So these are the main differences, and literally or possibly nothing else. And there is already a merge request about this, and this works only on MicroPython because MicroPython has an uh, init repo functionality that PyDi doesn't provide. Uh, I've been trying to implement the same PyDi. Unfortunately, I couldn't. But at the same time, we have things that work better in PyDi and 
things that work better in MicroPython. So why should we ditch any option around instead of enabling as much as we can? So that's it. That's my jam. Okay, but the thing is, if we go back to the MicroPython terminal, we can do things like tab completion and funky things like that because we can start to use oh, I can uh, press read, tab. read, 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 read line. I can, and... I can press tab. I'm pressing tab here on the main. I'm not. I'm pressing tab on the on the on the on the worker. So here's here's the thing. The main is actually superior to the worker because it's based on strings. The worker was uh, created around what PyDot can do and then adapted to MicroPython. And I think that in, in this case, the main, the main thread is based on what Storm can do and it works on MicroPython. And so I think the next step is to have the same on, on, uh, on the worker side of MicroPython too. Uh, one step of the time, but if I do A, B, C, D equal one, two, three, the moment I do A, B, and I press tab, it's going to be A, B, C, D, and it's going to be one, two, three. I can go up with the arrows. I can go down. I can do Control C. I can do Control C, Control D. Ooh, what happened? Control C, Control D, Control E. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, paste the special MicroPython <laughs> modes. Yeah, yeah, all of them are there. Yeah, and do everything. <laughs> and that that's uh, on the main thread unfortunately and that that's that, that's actually pretty lame because I, I, I want these to work first of all in the worker side of affair um, but unfortunately this is this new merge request is for main and to bring to main everything that XM can do um, on the worker side I need to do some more work it's gonna be exactly the same because I'm I'm using okay this is the last thought of um, for me to, to, to demo that stuff works so I'm using something that is the same code um, and see this yeah oh gosh I, that's, I wasn't your, that's your Star Trek this. communicator isn't it Wait, 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 wait. So, um, do you want to do you want to just increase the font size there? No, not here. Um, okay. So I have. Can you see the? Yeah. Can you see my screen? Maybe yeah. I should increase that. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm gonna connect to this device, which is there, right there. It's connected, and so from from so we'll import LED and um, look. The moment I do this, I shall see switch, and now I'm gonna click on toggle LED. Oh, look, <laughs> it's switching, it's switching. So all, all I've shown um, around the PyTerminal main comes from this experimentation, uh, which was about running a terminal through Xterm into a serial board thing. And now I can just write loop, and when I write loop, so now I can interact with it. So I can do this, 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 is. And no matter what's the state when I get out of the loop, I can still. Um, what am I doing? Um, oh, I can still click to the LED. Is it on now? It's going to be off. Yes. Is yeah, it? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. This is how a real REPL works. Oh, and you're seeing that the moment I drop the device is disconnecting it, <laughs> everything is fine. And I don't have errors in console. So how cool is this? Um, anyway, um, yeah, the demo is, is done. And uh, the thing is, can bring main MicroPython terminal on, uh, MicroPython terminal on the main thread, 
it's gonna be work better than I'm the worker. So the next step for me is to solve the uh, worker thing because I think everything we wrote around pilot abilities is still valid, but it's gonna work better with MicroPython thanks to the lovely, what is it? What is it? What is it? Uh, plugins, a terminal. Where are we here? Uh, we are here. REPL init. So this is what makes MicroPython Wasm behave fully like um, like a proper REPL and he parses char by char. So all the things it does, we fixed that before and now it works smoothly and it works everywhere and it works on devices and I'm super happy about this. And, and uh, yeah, so there is a merge request and I hope somebody will have a look. And if we don't want to release until the worker equivalent uh, feature is, is done, I'm okay with that. But at the same time, I think we, we have with us code, we are we are not even using um, here. We are, we are having um, like the dependencies push for read line is not necessary at all in this case. It's necessary because of the previous logic on the worker. So I want to really get rid of this and create a proper terminal uh, when it comes to MicroPython because it works very very well and it works way better than what we have right now for PyLight. And I'm not excluding that I'm doing something wrong with PyLight, but um, I will ask around and see and see if if we can yeah. have the same functionality here and there. Yeah. Hood, Hood, Hood might be the uh, best the best person to uh, to ping on that if we release it and he can then see what we're doing. Um, uh, Oops. Yeah. Cool. Andrea, as always, uh, that always brings a smile to my face. If only we were giving a talk about this sometime soon. Uh, wouldn't that be good? Fifth of June. Yeah. Be there or be square. We're being live streamed, aren't we? So that'll be fun nice. in their land. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So shall we pre-announce it? Like, we're going to be on... This is why I'm um, saying, yeah. I thought me meeting in Milan, it's called my... My pie or pie my, <laughs> I think it's my pie, yeah. and it's gonna be fifth of June, and it's gonna be in Milan, and it's gonna be live stream. And if you follow at least me on on on, on Twitter, I'm gonna uh, spread the link uh, whenever it happens, or I will try to spread the link also in Discord and whenever it happens, because both me and Nicholas are going to be there, and it's it's gonna be fun. We uh, there are more demos around this. It's it's <laughs> coming out and, and the MicroPython uh, capabilities. So please, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm actually, what I'm looking forward to is A, um, watching your demo of it. I mean, it's going to be a presentation in two halves with mine very much the smaller half, which is kind of an overview of my of, uh, PyScript. Yeah. But then uh, Andrea's got this whole kind of, he just starts plugging things into other things and uh, it's all done with PyScript and MicroPython and it's going to be great. What I want to no. see is what happens at the end, uh, whether the folks who are in the room actually realize just what's just happened you know who's talking to who and how it's talking to each other and the fact that the browser is here and micropython is on a device here and it's not turtles all the way down it's pythons all the it's snakes on a plane it's uh so um and that's going to be interesting i i often find when demonstrating something for the first time to a group of people who've never encountered it before the first five minutes, they have to ask questions again, and then you slowly start to see the kind of the implications of what's been going on um, start to start to come up, um, which is really rather a wonderful thing to see. So I, I hope we, we, we see that. And uh, yeah, it's going to be good fun. It's going to be good fun to spend time together. Um, OK, I'm, I'm very aware of the um, of the time because we're two minutes over. Um, 
And so thank you very much to everybody who's contributed. Uh, I will share a link to this once I stuck it on YouTube, which is going to be the last thing I do this afternoon in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, and with that, uh, I'm going to stop the video. Uh, uh,